I'd like to invite Sam and Nico up here right now to join me. So real quick, Sam and Nico uh, from Quarter Digital, they also have a What's very, up, guys? They have a fantastic YouTube channel. There. Whoa. So uh, really quick, we're going to do, uh, we're gonna do what we're calling a tip-off here. We're going to throw uh, some of the stuff that we do in Premiere out one at a time, and we'll see who goes first. All right, first things first. How many people have the default keyboard shortcuts set up in Premiere? Oh, one, so everyone's got person. custom? Who's got custom keys? Raise your hands. <laughs> All right, I'm going I'm to do the very first thing here, keyboard shortcuts. For me, uh, and someone else has it in there, right? So me, the first thing that I see a lot of people do in terms of editing is zooming in and zooming out, mm. and it kills me because it kills me because what you're, t what you're dealing with is you're never going to be looking at another side of the timeline. You're going to want to pop in wherever your playhead is, right? So I'm going to go to the Premiere default and then go to Zoom. And the two that I do, Zoom in, I do Z, and then Zoom out, Shift Z. And I keep everything on the left side of the keyboard. So when I pop in, I'm in and out like that. Sam, Whoa, Nico. Slow down, Freddie. Slow down. <laughs> Sam and Nico here. You're losing me. Uh, also, do a lot of YouTube stuff. What are, you guys, uh, what are some of the stuff that you guys do in Premiere? All right, well, here's a sweet uh, bro tip. When, when we tip, trade tips with Freddie, we call them bro tips, not pro tips. Um, so one of my favorite tools here is when I'm scrubbing around and I'm doing my edit and I'm checking a shot here, the F button is my favorite button. Now, I don't know if you guys, how many of you guys came over from Final Cut Pro 7 back in the day, but Final Cut, you could pull up another clip in your bin really quickly by double clicking on it. Problem was, you'd have your in and out points set and if you mess with them, they mess with the in and out points in your timeline. So the F button just simply matches that frame, but now you can change those in and out points however you want and pull that clip back in and change it. Also, it's a great way to grab audio if you deleted the audio from a clip and you want to keep it synced. Sick pro tip. Uh, Sick pro here's, tip. Here's, a, here's a big one here, guys. Uh, we're going to do ripple trim. Next edit to playhead. Ripple trim previous edit to playhead. And then we're going to do... So you set up your keyboard like it's a first-person shooter? Go to the next edit point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you know, I, I think you know, we kind of have gamer backgrounds. And one of the, one of the things that kind of helped us with that is uh, we like to not move our hands. And I think that for editing, philosophy-wise, for me, editing is about editing at speed of thought, right? Editing can be a very reactive process. Editing can be you're interacting with actors, or you know, especially dramatic acting. You're looking up there, and you're trying to find the moments to organically pick your vantage points within the scene. It does not work if you're spending three seconds looking down at their hands and trying to find the tool to switch that around. You know? And I think that that's something that, that allows, you know, what I like a lot about uh, what you can do with Premiere is, you can t is a lot of these commands get brought out into the keyboard shortcut side. So real quick, I'm going to show you next edit point, previous edit point, A and S. So again, this is all under the left hand here, which allows you then sort of jump around. And what I like to do here is D, ripple trim, previous edit to playhead. F, ripple trim next set to playhead. So for example, we're, let's say let's preview this shot here. Here's a car. It's going. Person gets out. And we're cutting to this. I want this sooner. Instead of having to deal with here, blade tool, select, or even if you have a blade tool shortcut, or sliding out and then sliding around on it, I'll go to here. And as soon as, okay, I want, as, soon as this person gets out, I'm going to back that up to here. Boom, F brings it over there, and we're next here. And then let's say the next shot, we're here sooner. I like the flare there. I'm going to start with the flare as it passes here. D brings it back. And now we've done, essentially, with two key keyboard commands, a lot of stuff that normally people are taking a lot of time to do. Dude, I didn't know about that. Ripple trim, DNF, A and S. And then, it, again, if it, the, in terms of layout, I leave everything on the left hand. So additionally, instead of doing next frame, step back one frame, step forward one frame, left and right, usually your arrow keys. Because my left hand's already on the ASD side of things, I'll step back with E, step forward with R. Step back many frames, I'll do Shift E, Shift R, which then allows us to, let's say we're really coming in here and fine tuning this edit. I can back it up, go to here, trim that back, and then go again. Maybe I want the flare to end, I want to start back there, back it up, play it. And again, this, this whole time you can do a lot of editing then without ever having to touch the mouse. For me, it's about the, as, as less as you touch the mouse as possible, the better and faster I think you're able to do it. And it's not about being impressive in terms of speed. It's not about trying to show off, oh, here's how fast I can cut something, and here's uh, and, and, and trying to show off in that way. But what it allows you to do is you're not having to spend so much time worrying about, OK, well, I want, OK, so I'm, I'm seeing him starting to throw the thing down. OK, I don't, want, I don't want that, but I saw that right away, so I'm just going to trim that back. And now I don't have to deal with that. 
anymore, and we're already good, and we're going to moving on to the next cut. Sam, well, what do you if, got? If you want to take your hands off the keyboard, you might want to consider uh, using a, uh, a macro application like uh, Voice Attack using Windows speech recognition software. You can import every single shortcut, and you don't even have to touch the keyboard once. You just speak the lines into your microphone. Please tell me you've done and this. And you, you let the program work on its own. Something tells me, Sam, you've never done that before. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's on my computer, though. You should see it. I, it's only a very recent development, though. Cool. You know, I think, again, I think for, for, for us, what, we, what it kind of comes down to is tool sets and everything only get you so far, right? And at the same time, you kind of owe it yourself to be, to be up to date, to know as much as you can possibly know with what you're doing. Because there's so many things that we talk about which seem redundant on set. And when I say like redundant, what, when, I, when, I get, when I sort of talk about that, what's more important and the takeaway there is redundancy on set, it, it, at the end of the day, it's money, right? So if you're, if you're able to save stuff, stuff on set and time on set to do something, and not have to deal with that. You might save, say, 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day. That might be enough for you to grab two extra takes at the end of the day, three extra takes at the end of the day, if you're trying to do a 12-hour turnaround. And for us to be able to do what we've done, we've done stuff very efficiently. You know, Generally, Sam and Nico, you guys are two-man crew. Pretty much. And you, guys, and you guys are doing everything by ourselves. Our crew sizes are very small. And a lot of people wear a lot of hats. And it's a, I think it's a tough growing pain that this whole industry is going to be going through very soon which is, I think that, frankly, a lot of stuff needs to be made cheaper. And it's, a, it's not an easy pill to swallow. It's not a message I think a lot of people want to hear. But the fact is, take the supply of entertainment out there and how much of it is readily available. And when you are facing such a torrent of, inf of information and, and of entertainment out there, you can't afford to be spending as much per minute to create high quality content. So in the end, the I think the most important thing to keep in mind is how to achieve and maintain a high level of quality of content without having to sacrifice story, character, and without necessarily sacrificing production design and, 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 and the look of everything. It's going to be a very challenging time. I think for us, it gets exemplified in our careers in that we're bridging this gap between amateur filmmaker on YouTube, seems to be free to watch, seems to be disposable content, and what some people consider higher quality, say, like television and, and feature films. I think that that line becomes more and more blurred as time goes on, especially given the fact that a lot of the audience that's, that's growing up now is not used to following the rules of traditional, right? They're watching on smartphones, they're watching on tablets. Video Game High School, for example, we saw 60%. 50 to 60% of all of our viewers, all 110 million views of Video Game High School, a show with, by the way, episodes up to an hour in length, were watching that show on smartphones and tablets. And even myself, I did not expect that much of, of a gap between regular viewers. I was expecting people to be watching on computers or televisions or smart TVs rather than doing things on phones and tablets. So it's definitely a different world that we're going to. And for us, a lot, of the, a lot of the way that we found success is utilizing tool sets and becoming efficient with the tools that we have available.